Welcome to this video presentation. My name is Victor Snook. I am the Senior BIM Consultant at Address. In this particular presentation, I want to show you the new functionality with regard to uh, assemblies in Revit 2013. And I'm also going to show you some new functionality within components within Revit 2013. Okay, if we go to assemblies first. Okay, assemblies were available in the previous release. Um, what's you couldn't do in the previous release of the assemblies was to put the assembly drawings which are automatically created onto any other sheet apart from the sheet that's within assemblies that's all changed and now assembly views can go onto any other sheet within the side the Revit project okay so the assemblies support placement of assembly views on regular project sheets manually transfer of assembly sheets during deletion assembly views origin definition so we have a quick look at assemblies so I'm just going to open up Revit. So this is um, a collection of uh, com concrete components with all rebar and stuff built within it. Okay, for those who haven't used assemblies before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and select all of these components. At the top on the ribbon, I have the opportunity to create an assembly. I'm going to call this one, yep, structural column three is absolutely fine. So if I click OK to that, now the assembly itself, it's, it's gathered it together as a one piece item which I can then go and edit the assembly. Okay, the assembly itself now sits underneath the project browser at the bottom. So if I expand the uh, project browser, what I can do is I can actually right click on the assembly and I can create a series of predefined views. And I'll say I want those views at 1 to 20. I want all of these views, including a drawing sheet of, drawing sheet of my choice. And if I go OK to that, what Revit will do is it will create a series of predefined views of my particular item. So I've got a sections, I've got elevation views, and I've even got a parts list. Okay. Previously um, within Revit, I have a, a sheet available within my assembly view. I could only drag the views created of an assembly onto the individual sheet within the assembly. Now, if I create a, another sheet inside my Revit project, Okay. I have the ability to drag the assembly views onto the other sheet that I have created. So it's a lot more flexible. Okay. That's that for assemblies. The other thing I want to look at today is part construction modeling for parts. Okay. You've had this in previous releases of Revit. They've added some nice functionality to 2013. Okay. Right. One of the bits and pieces they've added, I can now merge, exclude and restore parts. So you get the ability to toggle on and off and, and join parts together. I can divide parts with a gap and a custom profile, which I will show you. Support linked models, object splitting and manipulation. Create parts from more than one model category. So you've got a, a lot more flex, flexibility. So if I um, go to Revit, I'm just going to close down my, um, my previous project. Okay, and open up my parts. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a very simple, I want to produce a corner joint of my uh, my wall. Okay, very simple, very simple uh, corner joint of a, a couple of concrete um, blocks, a couple of a concrete slab. Okay, for me to be able to create, turn this into construction parts, what I can do is I can select uh, one of my pieces of wall, and at the top, I can say create parts. So if I go and create a part from this, what I can do then is I can divide my part, which is nothing new um, to what you had previously. If I go and say I want to divide my part and I want to divide it uh, one meter away from that corner, I go and create my sketch. What is new for Revit 2013 is now I can add a profile. So I'm going to say I want to do a notched profile. Um, I can add a divider gap, so I want to divide a gap of 20 millimeters and a profile offset. So now, when I go and apply that, what it will do is it'll add uh, a little notched profile for me. Okay, so I now get this as a uh, completion of my um, dividing of my part. If I go through the same processes, because I'm looking to create a, a predefined wall joint, if I select my other my other wall. 
again, part creation, divide my part. Again, 20 millimeter gap, notched profile. Apply, okay. And green tick to finish. So I now have um, the beginnings of my uh, my corner joint. Okay, what we can do now is these are all individual entities. What I can do now is I can select the two parts that make up my corner joint and under my ribbon I now have merged parts. So I can actually join them together to make a third part. Okay, so you can kind of nicely create predefined corner joints that will come to site. Okay, what you can also do, just uh, for those people who haven't seen parts and haven't experienced them before, what I can also do under the views of my particular model, I get the chance to show, show parts or I can show the original and it takes it back to being an original wall or I get the ability to show both. Okay, so you can toggle on what you actually want to see. Okay, the other thing you get for um, the part creation in 2013, if I actually select a component, you now have the ability to be able to exclude parts, which will then go and turn them off. So you can actually add and remove and merge parts and create a, again, to turn them back on, select them again, I can click on the icon, it will bring it back in. Okay, that's the parts. Okay, if you have any questions or if you require a little bit more information about any of the things you've seen on any of the tutorials, please uh, visit our YouTube site. So it's youtube.com address limited. Please go to our website, www.address.co.uk, or you can ring the number at the bottom. Okay, thank you for watching this presentation. Goodbye.